How would that feel to you if she would come with you? I wouldn't care yeah. if sometimes she went, but it went along with my friends. But the point is, there are times I like to be with my friends by myself. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, I don't, uh, I, and, and that's the problem. I don't feel that I should have to have her with me 24 hours a day. I mean, we spend a lot of time together it is, as it is, and I just need time to be with my friends. Mm -hmm. So one of the one one of the central ideas about going out is to have some time for yourself to enjoy your exactly. time with friends, and so and on the other hand, you would understand in a way that it would help her to feel a little bit safer if she knows. Absolutely, what as long as it doesn't lead to every time I go with my mm. friends, I have to take her with me. If she wants to go out with her friends, I don't. You know, I mean. The same thing can happen to her. So I could, but I don't have those uh, that that fear that that she's out looking for somebody else. So I, I just don't think it's justified. Mm -hmm. Do you agree that when you go out with your friends, that I can go out with my friends? Absolutely. Yeah. Would that be something you would? Yes, like I can do, do that. Mm -hmm. Mm, good, but then idea. he should not be angry when I come home late. Mm, mm -hmm. So you would expect the same thing for yourself. Yes. And you're allowing to him. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, um, how about how about trying this idea to try that out and uh, to um, to make this kind of deal to try that out uh, during one week to allow each other to go out for one night and to make this experience and to, to tell about it when we meet next time. Because there are still so many other issues we have to talk about, so it would be worth a try, I think, just to get the experience and to, to talk how you felt about it and if that would be something you would continue, you'd like to continue to try and to do. Okay. And okay. If it works out, fine. If it doesn't work out, we can still find other ways to uh, deal with these feelings of uncertainty and, and the, this possible uh, danger of the of the partner being unfaithful, which I really understand. It's, that is Thank you. A concern. Okay. Well, Richard, it's very interesting, and the problem that that couple had, or have, uh, I would imagine that's a common one. Uh, yeah, jealousy and money-related issues are really one of the most uh, frequent problems people have to face in bicultural relationships. Sure. I mean, you, you mentioned this uh, in the interview at the beginning about the, the, the cultural side of it, because, of course, if if uh, Westerners are coming across here and they're in a situation where uh, they, they have a, a Thai partner, mm -hmm. they, of course the Thai style would be to support the family. And of course that's completely alien almost to, 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 to us as Westerners. Um, and and that, that must be a, something of a challenge. Oh yeah, it is. I mean, I know I find that challenge. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a different mindset really and, and people grow up in the belief uh, that that's part of a functional relationship sure. to get support by the husband or by mm. the boyfriend. And uh, on the other side, Thai women are ready to give what they have in exchange. So uh, if the boyfriend or husband uh, doesn't uh, keep up his side of the deal, mm -hmm. it's they will have to face sure. Uh, problems. Well, you know, it's interesting that you use the word deal because that's what it is, isn't it? That's what a relationship mm -hmm. is. It's a trade-off, getting compromise within your relationship. Uh, where he'll say, well, okay, I'm going to do this, 
and I will not do that. And even Western kind of relationships, do. though we uh, reluctant to admit it, but it's still some kind of a deal where both partners have to be happy and have to have a feeling that they get something out of it. Sure. Otherwise, they wouldn't stay in it and would be advised by yeah. all of their friends to. Uh, get the hell out of it. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. Now th this cup, I mean, we, we, we just showed really the, a, a brief part of it because mm -hmm. the, the questions that you, they, they, that you then are asking them, and I noticed it's really all about just getting them to talk, right? It's just, you're really just trying to uh, get them to speak to you and to open up and of course it's hard because they haven't met you before but well some some people they really talk a lot in the relationship especially when if the women if the woman is able to speak English yes uh, better than most is better than most are actually doing but um, uh, it's not all about talking because uh, they of course everyone has his or her interests and of course wants to wants to achieve their goals and sometimes it needs someone who is not part of the system and that's usually what I'm doing to try to keep a neural pos neutral position and to uh, support them the way I'm asking questions the ideas I'm bringing in I have lots of experience like I said I worked for 12 years uh, doing uh, sex therapy relationship uh, uh, counseling uh, and got quite some experiences I can give back to people if they just uh, have uh, if they just ready to pick up sure the that's it. but that's they're gonna make that first step haven't they that's it. They have to make the first step. They have to say, look, yeah. we, we need a little bit of help. And that's not easy. I, I understand that very well because usually, because basically it's calling a stranger and you still don't know, will it work out? They just know they will have to pay some money, but yeah. uh, don't have any idea of what mm. they have mm. to face. And actually counseling can be challenging for a couple because they have to deal with different ideas they have to try out something new something they probably not very enthusiastic about at the first of place course. but if they stay with it for a while uh, usually they see improvements and uh, are pretty happy that they did this okay well you, you said there uh, if they stay with it for a while so what what is the actual process I mean it's that this couple today it's not like they come in and they say this is the problem and then you say okay this is the solution I would yeah. imagine it mm -hmm. doesn't really work like that so so if if people are, who are watching and they're thinking okay what what can we expect what are the process uh, after making that initial first step Usually it starts with just giving me a call. I don't ask for any details on the phone. I just want to know what what the problem is about. Uh, some some basic idea, one, okay. just one word or something. Uh, like uh, we have problems in the relationship. That's enough just to help me understand what we what we're talking about. And uh, then we make an appointment. And during the first session. Uh, you can imagine this like an interview, like like you've seen it before. Mm -hmm. I ask lots of questions, uh, and uh, every question helps me to understand what the what the couple or the the, the person who is visiting mm -hmm. me uh, has to deal with on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the better understanding I get, the more creative and the more feedback I can give mm -hmm. and it happens quite often actually that uh, I can give quite some useful feedback after the first session already. Oh really? Uh, not always a solution for the problem mm -hmm. where someone can just go home and be happy again sure. but uh, something that gives a new view, a new idea about the situation okay. in, and we'll continue from there and from there depending on the problem and depending on what we found out during the first session mm -hmm. we make further appointments for mm. every two or three weeks okay and, and i noticed yes in, in um part of the conversation which i which we haven't shown on tv but you said to them well why don't we we try this and just for a week mm -hmm. and then we come back so it's it's about kind of giving it a, a time frame for them i guess yeah. so that they can see right well this is what we decided we were going to try this is when the period over which we did it and then you've got an assessment mm -hmm. which i'm yeah. assuming is is part of so then they would come exactly. back to see you yeah. then uh, i often compare 
the process to to taking medicine uh, drugs against illnesses like if you if you're coughing you know that you have to take your medicine for a week or maybe longer till the last symptom is gone yes and that's what what happens in counseling to uh, have to really get rid of the problem for mm -hmm. some amount of time then you can feel safe it will never come back to eradicate mm -hmm. it right okay okay well it's very interesting i mean and, and the the example that we showed today although although we said it's a, a quite a typical one um but people do come to you with you know single people will come to you with other other related things that you talked about depression uh, and, and of course i would imagine there's a lot of people who've been through especially the last year and a half with the, the sort of global economic disaster where people have lost money and exchange rates are still terrible uh, and they might, you know, find themselves in a situation where they, they feel they need to, to talk to someone, mm. you know, which yeah. which would hopefully be yourself. Okay, I think we'll just give some uh, details now, Richard. Um, your office is on Soy Ko Pai. Now, Ko Soy Ko Pai is a really long road, but <laughs> oh, you're yeah. actually not hard to mm -hmm. find if you come from the Tepesit side, are you? Yeah, it's Soy 6 on, off Tepesit Road. Uh, just about 300 meters from the junction. Sure, so you come up and you're, you're on the left, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Okay. okay, Richard, well, I think we're going to wrap it up. Um, so thanks very much for watching today. Uh, this has been uh, quite an insight, actually, into sort of taking a, a Western perspective and putting it here in Thailand, which Richard's been doing now for over a year uh, with uh, really great success. So if you feel that uh, you've got a somewhere to turn to or you need somewhere to turn to, perhaps uh, Richard Fellner is your man. Okay, this is Paul for PMTV. Bye-bye. Thank you.